So let me tell you about John. I, uh, I had the good fortune of working with John uh, for 13 months in online advertising, where we uh, used the Fibonacci sequence to make ads go more faster. <laughs> and uh, those were the, probably the most formative 13 months of my career or whatever. I also had the good fortune of working with Aaron Patterson, but I don't get to introduce him today, unfortunately. Um, and everything, everything that I know about Ruby was shaped in that year. Um, everything that I know about, you know, being a man and my job and all that stuff was also shaped in that year, largely by by this guy. Um, and he's, you know, he's been there for me in some ways outside of just. Uh, teaching me to use a space inside my curly braces, but not inside my parentheses. And I, I don't know, John is, I, I can't say enough good things about him. So if you weren't already drinking, you uh, might want to start during this talk. I, I've heard that all of John's talks are better while drinking. So uh, is that sufficient, John? So John Barnett. This talk will not be fueled by drinking. Uh, this talk will be fueled by unprepared terror <laughs> and sleep deprivation um, and a really angry red clock that's right up here in front. This chair is here in case I get really tired and just collapse right on stage so I at least have something to grab into. So I'm unfortunately a terrible, terrible keynote speaker. <laughs> Because <laughs> I run out of funny things in like 10 minutes, I have 5 to 10 minutes of charm on any given day, and I can use it up once and then it's gone. I have to sleep once before I get any of it back. So, naturally Ben and Shane asked me to keynote, and naturally I said yes immediately, um, which should be a really good indicator of my mental state right now. <laughs> it's not good. So, um, we're going to do less jokes today and talk a lot more about some really uplifting topics like stress and guilt and limitations and failure. Uh, so you might only collapse on stage and have to get dragged off here in a bit. Um, this is mostly for Rich Kilmer, who's giving a talk later this evening that is going to be much more happy and uplifting. And uh, so I promised him I'd try and bring everybody down to a really depressed level before they walk into Rich's talk. So, um, you know, for those of you who don't know me, my name is John. I I am absolutely exhausted. I've spent the last three years pouring my heart and soul into a company, and it has come very, very close to killing me. <laughs> and I'm working very hard right now to figure out a way to fix that, uh, to feel happy about coding again, to feel good about my job, to feel good about where I am, to be able to sleep at night. So I want to talk a little bit about the things that I've been thinking about in the course of trying to do that uh, for some of you that may, may be in a very similar position. So. Um, Talk about stress a little bit. Stress is an additive thing. It doesn't just it doesn't just come out of nowhere. You don't come back from two weeks in the Hamptons or uh, or a month in wine country at your villa and wake up one morning and start screaming at the cat and chewing your fingernails. It doesn't. I mean, unless you're like game pot. It doesn't. It doesn't happen all at once. It happens to you over time. It builds up and it builds up and it does it very gradually. Um, I think that stress is what happens when you go to bed and you feel like you did less than the best you could have done today. Uh, and it doesn't even have to be a big thing, it can be a little bit of stress that makes you that much more tired or that much more unhappy at the end of your day. And day after day, over time, it builds up uh, and gets more exhausting. It, it clouds your mind, which is really, really insidious because you start to lose your ability to reason clearly about what's happening to you, about the fact that you're actually inside stress, which is you know, not really a good thing for those of us whose brains are our tools that we use every day. Um, in the same way that, that someone who abuses alcohol or drugs can't really see the, the downward slope until they get to the very bottom and something extremely, extremely bad has happened to them, it's very, very hard to see 
how stress has affected your life until you get to just the, the rock bottom point where your harmony is gone, your balance is gone, and you're, you, you can't understand why you're not productive anymore. Uh, and that's happened to me recently. Um, it's actually very hard for me to talk about what it is that's stressing me out because I'm so far inside the system, uh, so far inside the problem right now. Um, I've got a few guesses. I think it's mostly because I have been working as hard as I can, but I don't feel like I've succeeded yet. Uh, and I think that's a problem with the definition of success. I think that uh, I think I've been obsessed with the, the really big win at the end, where if I just keep on pounding and pushing and gritting my teeth and pulling all nighters and uh, and so on, I will at some point have something magical happen to me that makes everything go away. Now. I can't even actually tell you what that means. I have no idea what it looks like. It's just this big fuzzy thing where all my problems go away. Uh, this, is, this is not a good thing. Uh, stress leads you to look for these big dramatic solutions to problems like a sabbatical or a, a resignation or possibly a, a good old fashioned meltdown on the stage of an improvised keynote. <laughs> or, <laughs> Or anything else that's that big and dramatic, you're trying to solve a problem that happened in tiny, tiny bits over time with one huge bell swoop. Uh, and we, we can't solve the problems like that. We are, we're culturally biased to do this. We are the children of our culture. And our culture has brought us up, that's bred us to worship these sort of disruptive events. The, uh, the opening of a new frontier, or a flash of inspiration, or the new tactic that makes the problem that was killing you completely obsolete, so you don't even have to worry about it anymore. We love these sort of things. Um, fad diets, and stomach stapling, and extreme makeovers, and uh, the lottery, the big rewrites, um, schemaless databases. You know, <laughs> these, uh, <laughs> I have a horrible problem. It's going to take me forever, and a lot of hard thinking, and a lot of small steps to fix this problem. So why don't we see if we can just define that problem out of existence and not worry about it anymore. Um, this, this does not work. Um, and stress really is a software thing too, right? You know, the big rewrite is generally a stress reaction. We've done a lot of things over time in very small bits that have gotten us to a place that's hard for us to live in. And we want to, we want to fix it by turning the chair over or turning the table over and building a beautiful new pavilion. But in the same way that you can't deal with personal stress by cracking, changing your name, and moving to Vancouver, um, well, I will let you know in several weeks whether that's actually effective or not. But I'm pretty sure that you, you can't deal with personal stress that way. And in the same way that uh, we can't deal with personal stress that way, in general, we shouldn't try to deal with stress in our software systems that way either. You have to have the same sort of boring, repetitive, uh, continuous iterative approach to fixing the problems. Um, both in software and in life, I've been working to change the way I deal with stress. Primarily by fighting every day against the the fantasy of the, the big event that fixes everything. And uh, doing small things every day where at the end of the process I do feel like I've accomplished something better. I may not have hit that one liquidity event or a perfect rewrite of my code or anything like that, but I've made some sort of progress. Um, one of the biggest pieces for me has been learning how to delegate, which I am horrible at. I mean horrible at, like take the keyboard away from people, horrible at. Uh, I spent at the company I'm at now about two years working by myself and finally had the chance to hire some really great software engineers. And so I took the, the pile of money I had for it, I found people I liked, I stalked them, I blackmailed them, uh, I threatened them, I got them to work for me, and I promptly started ignoring them because they didn't walk in the door with a perfect knowledge of my entire system, what was in my brain, what we wanted to do next, and everything else. And just like when I was little and my younger sister would take a coloring book and be doing the world's worst job of coloring inside it, and I would get sick of watching her take the crayon away and show her how to keep it within the damn lines. Um, I did the same thing with these folks, these great folks that I went through all this effort to go out and find, 
I brought them in and then said in the back of my head, well, they're not me from, from the get-go, so I can't use them for anything. Um, this is a terrible idea. It's a product of stress, definitely. Um, and it's a product of, of me not being able to think clearly when this sort of stuff is happening to me. I was very lucky in that the guy I hired first is very smart and very good and, uh, and a brave man who called me on it and kind of socked me in the head and told me that I was, I was wasting his time by not using him. So I'm learning how to delegate more. Um, it's great. <laughs> I mean, I hired these guys for a reason. And, uh, and now, now I can actually just offload things onto them every time I think of them and wait for them to complain about it and still feel like I've gotten something done, uh, which is spectacular. Um, the moment I was able to do that, just to delegate a couple of things, I realized that it doesn't even have to be getting these things done. Just the idea of sharing some of the things that stress you out with someone you work with is tremendously useful. Um, you know, whether it's personal or professional, even though the person who works next to you is, is certainly fighting their own battles, because everyone is, they're not the same, they're not the exact same battle. We can still get each other's backs. Um, I, I've learned to, and I encourage you to share the stress you're experiencing with your coworkers, uh, because it, it has helped save me. Um, this is not, this isn't just a business thing either. This isn't just coworkers. Uh, I used to work extremely hard to never ever tell my wife about anything that was going on at work, like good or bad. I just wanted to, to shield her from it completely. I didn't want her to worry. Um, those of you who are married probably understand what a fundamentally stupid <laughs> idea this is, uh, because there's just no way to do that. Um, but instead of sharing my problems with her and letting her try and help me, I would bottle them up and then pick a fight about where the TV remote lived, you know, uh, which is what a dick, honestly. <laughs> and uh, you know, when I finally realized this and was able to sit down and talk with her, she very, very carefully explained to me what a moron I was, and that beyond the fact that she loved me, she was also contractually obligated to listen to my problems, <laughs> which is a huge upside of marriage, in my opinion. Um, <laughs> once I realized that, it was great. I mean, I can complain to her constantly now. She has to tell me to shut up. <laughs> it's a uh, it's so much better. So the same thing applies outside of business. Share your stress with the people who love you. They're probably stressed too. It doesn't matter. They're not stressed about the exact same things. They can still give you some support. Um, stress, unfortunately, is just sort of the top layer. It's a, it's a gateway drug, as it were. It's a, it's a very good gateway drug for guilt. And in the same way that uh, Stress is something that keeps you up at night and makes you stare at the ceiling. Guilt is, guilt is that feeling of waking up in the morning and knowing that you've already lost. You haven't gotten done the things that you need to get done today. You may have just woken up 30 seconds ago, but you already feel completely behind. Um, and uh, you start punishing yourself immediately for, for not getting stuff done. Um, when I first had this thought, I made myself sit down with a piece of paper and just stream of consciousness, write out every single thing that came to mind that bothered me a little bit. Everything from, I should really get this car that's three months late for the DMV in, to, gee, I'm probably drinking too much, to, gee, it'd be great if I, I use this treadmill, to, does my cat need registration? Didn't matter how important it was or how unimportant. Didn't matter what part of my life it was. Um, but I was stunned to see how many things I wrote down. Um, I'm going to ask you guys to do a, just a really quick experiment for me. If you'd all close your eyes and just think for about 15 seconds or so about that sort of minutia, the stuff that occasionally comes through your mind during the day, make yourself a little mental list. There will not be a test. You don't have to write this down, but just make yourself a little list. And raise your hands if you feel like you've thought of more than three things. Keep your hands up if you thought of more than five things. Keep your hands up if you thought of more than ten things. And that was in 15 seconds. And uh, I'm certain especially you have way more on your mind than me. <laughs> I know you're not to be trusted. 
Um, that is amazing. We're, we're trying to do these tremendously complicated things with our brains, things that we have no evolutionary help to do, things that only in the last 50 years have we figured out how to think about, or even to have the words to talk about. And that much of your brain in a setting where you're around your people that you're enjoying, where you're not necessarily at work, can still throw out how many things that are bothering you that you want to deal with. Um, I started doing this on a daily basis to see how much of my brain power is being taken up by this. And it turns out I can list 20 or 30 things a day that are bothering me. There's a lot of overlap. Uh, it's not constant, but, um, but those sort of things always come up for me over and over again. And I feel guilty for not addressing them. I feel guilty uh, for not giving them the time that they probably deserve. I feel guilty because I feel like I haven't managed my time well enough to deal with them. Primarily, I feel guilty because it's a big mass of shit I haven't done and I haven't organized it in any way. There's no list for me to check off. There's no feeling of accomplishment to have gift if I get one of them done because there's the huge mass of stuff. So I started taking those little lists and organizing them, going over them every day and asking myself whether there was something I could do about them. And if there wasn't, I said, okay, there's literally nothing I can do about this today. I'm not going to worry about it anymore. And that has made a tremendous difference for me. Uh, just the, the act of writing them down, uh, and I encourage you to try the same thing, um, was, was tremendously, tremendously helpful. I, you know, I in the course of, of the business work we've done over the last several years, I've felt very guilty about the amount of time I've been able to give to my family, the amount of time I've been able to give to my friends, uh, I've written no significant open source software in years because I've put all of my energy into this company. And I felt very guilty about that. But I never really thought about it in those terms. I just thought, wow, I feel like, like shit about where everything is and, and why is that? Um, but now I can actually say to myself, okay, I would feel much better if I were still contributing to the community. I would feel much better if I were spending a little bit of time today or tomorrow or the next day taking a breath working on something that's not my work, um, and just being a little more specific about the things that bother me. Um, stress and guilt tend to go back and forth, obviously, and they magnify and enhance the limitations of the situation I've been working at a very, very small, very low budget company for several years. There's nothing wrong with that. But because I've been so stressed and so tired, I've built it up into a huge monster that's going to keep us from being successful. Oh, there's no way I can do this without money. Oh, there's no way I can run this, uh, this system without having cash behind me. Oh, there's no way I can get the support I need or the people that I desperately need uh, to support me. Um, and those things aren't true. But because I was spending so much time exhausted and tired and stressed, I made them true. I worried about the limitations far, far more than, uh, than I should have. And it made me a worse employee, definitely a worse engineer, and, and pretty much generally worse to be around. Uh, all of my friends can, can tell you this is absolutely true. Um, so, Here's what I'm doing to fix this. Um, I am sitting down taking a very, very close look at how I spend my time and the things that me uh, and the ways in which I behave that are unhealthy for me. Um, one of the first steps to do that for me was coming out and telling you guys about it. Um, because I think that a lot of us, when we go through this sort of thing, don't Don't think about the other folks that we know, especially if they're casual, especially if they're professional as folks we ever want to show any sort of weakness to. Um, but I think that it's, it's very important that we show it when it's there. So I, I'm exhausted. I'm personally and professionally exhausted. I'm trying very hard to get out of it by refocusing on my, my life, on the things that are important to me, to 
focusing on the, the, the friends and the mentors who have taught me tremendous amounts about code in the industry, uh, to focusing on my family, to delegating things to, uh, to my employees who can actually help me out, um, and to coming and hanging out with all of you guys. This, uh, simply being able to talk about this on stage is a huge help to me. Um, and it's something that I want all of you to make yourselves available for, for everyone else. You know, I, I am here for anyone who would like to talk to me. Um, and I would like all of you to be able to do the same thing. I, I am very grateful that Ben and Shane invited me here. Um, when I sat and tried to figure out what I was going to talk about, my mind was completely blank. Now keep in mind this is six weeks. I spent the entire six weeks wondering what I was going to talk about, wondering why I couldn't find a topic, <laughs> wondering what in the world was wrong with me that I couldn't think of a topic considering how many billions of things there were to, to talk about. Um, and I realized that it was because I was exhausted and because I was stressed and because I was guilty about not spending more time on myself and on the community. So I wanted to come and tell you guys about it. And uh, this is a little earlier than, than Shannon and I had planned, but, uh, but that's what I have to say to you guys. And I appreciate you listening.